who is Dr. Harsha De Silva, candidate on the Samagi Janabala Vegya. All joining us tonight for the first time on the show is uh, Form Minister Susil Premajanta, candidate of the Sri Lanka Punjana Perimuna, as well as Parker Balasurya, candidate of the Sri Lanka Puljana Perimuna, who is no stranger to the show. Let's start off tonight's show with uh, Susil Premajan, the candidate of the Sri Lanka Puljana Perimuna, also a former cabinet minister as well. Now, Minister, today, interestingly, uh, the Prime Minister, Mahinda Rajapaksa, convened a meeting. Uh, for this particular meeting, in <laughs> almost all parliamentarians, all parliamentarians were invited. However, several key players of the opposition did not attend. Now, I am not going to ask you a question about what was this meeting all about, but my question to you is very simple. Who is the boss running the country right now? Is it the President or the Prime Minister? Your time starts now. <coughs> According to the Constitution, the President uh, is the head of the state. And the, at the moment, the Prime Minister is the Prime Minister of the chaotic government. When the Parliament is dissolved, until the next election is uh, held, uh, according to the constitution, uh, uh, the, the, the prime minister and the cabinet of ministers continuing until the uh, next election is over. So that is the status quo at the moment. So therefore, the prime minister and the prime minister of the caretaker government uh, can take some decisions. And the president, as executive president, according to the constitution, he can take decisions as the head of the state and the prime minister is the head of the government. These are this is the two, two functions, yeah. two functions uh, given to the executive president and the prime minister. Constitutionally, uh, minister, can the prime minister of this country request uh, former parliamentarians there to no attend barrier, a meeting? There are no barrier in the constitution to summon former uh, parliamentarians, not the uh, the, 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 the eighth parliament, even from the seventh parliament or the sixth parliament, he can summon, not the officially, but unofficially, a situation like this to uh, explain them the steps that uh, the government has taken uh, from uh, the outset until today. And uh, if they have, they have any suggestions, so, so then they can make their uh, observations at that uh, discussion. Um, now, Minister, this was somewhat of a home and home game, uh, if not for the Tamil National Alliance parliamentarians who were in attendance today at uh, the um, meeting uh, in question. Uh, Minister, there was several weeks ago also such a meeting that was convened by the Prime Minister and the President also attended this particular meeting in question. However, today, you did not see the president attending the meeting in question and you saw the prime minister convene the meeting and holding the head chair. A home and home game, what is the real thrust or the thrust of having such a meeting in question when you don't have key players of the opposition to voice their concerns? Because the parliamentarians are uh, in the legislature, right? The president as the executive. So there are two arms. So then the I don't see any reason why that the Prime Minister can't summon such a meeting uh, now you, uh, from the Council. <laughs> I, I was pretty sure that you will come up with that answer. So I have a follow-up question to that Minister as well. If the Prime Minister want to convene such a meeting, there is no problem at all and he has the mandate yes. to do so. However, then why have a separate meeting for the Tamil National Alliance parliamentarians at his residence if this was a platform to raise concerns and discuss about the problems relating to COVID-19. What was this meeting? Yeah, yeah. Question it's a good question about? and I'm, I'm, I, I like to answer to that question because uh, I was at that uh, uh, meeting with uh, former parliamentarians, not, from, not only from 8th parliament and 7th, 6th and then some uh, 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 retired uh, 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 UNP parliamentarians and the Muslim Congress parliamentarians and representing so many political parties, they were there. And uh, apart from the parliamentarians from 8th parliament, then uh, Tamil National Alliance, uh, led by uh, Mr. Sambandhan, together with his uh, uh, colleagues, uh, attended. I think uh, most of the parliamentarians represented uh, TNA were there. And then the 
uh, after the, the so many parliamentarians pose some uh, questions and then they made some observations and they requested to uh, uh, strengthen some some of uh, the, the actions taken by the government, especially in the northern and eastern provinces. Of course, then as the uh, representatives from northern and eastern provinces, they express their views on behalf of uh, their uh, people. In a way, that's good. That is their responsibility. And uh, Mr. Sambandan, uh, after uh, about one, one and a half hours having the discussions, uh, he stood up and then he handed over a document to Prime Minister. Uh, a letter. A letter. And at that time, at that time, we I observed that uh, they had brief discussion, one or two minutes, and only after that, uh, Prime Minister uh, and agreed with uh, Mr. Sambandan to have a, a separate discussion with their group in the evening. This is not not, not pre-planned one. Uh, very quickly, before I move to Dr. Hatha de Silva, uh, very well knowing the politician. Uh, as far as the man within himself, uh, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa, did invite uh, the TNA to have a meeting with him subsequently. And what was this meeting all about? No, I think that is, uh, that is as the result time? of uh, the brief discussion uh, had uh, Mr. Sambandan with the Prime Minister. Uh, it's open forum. It's not a, 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 a hidden agenda. <laughs> uh, uh, my, my question to you, uh, I also want to ask a question to you, uh, uh, Minister, with regard to what really happened at this meeting, but I want to uh, drag my attention to Dr. Harshan De Silva, candidate of the Samaki Janabala who will be contesting uh, for the uh, Kalambo district, if at all the elections are held on the 20th of uh, uh, June. Uh, Harsha, what was the reason for the Samaki Janabala to not attend this meeting in question? Now, this was an important meeting, uh, at least that is the way in which uh, the uh, ruling party, which is in governance, portrayed it to be. And if at all, uh, there should have been a representation from your party as well, because uh, Sajid Premadasa is the opposition leader of the parliament. And why was there no representation from your side? Uh, thanks for inviting us on this show this evening. I think the uh, answer given by my friend Susil Premjanta uh, explains why uh, today's meeting was of no consequence because what he said uh, was that this meeting was held to inform uh, the MPs and former or rather former MPs of what the government was doing. Um, that is not uh, the uh, intention <coughs> or should not have been the intention of a, a, a meeting um, uh, of any serious nature. Um, the par parliamentarians are supposed to meet in parliament to make law. Uh, parliamentarians are not supposed to, uh, uh, you know, sort of meet at the residence of the prime minister just to have a chat. And, and that, was un that was not really the, the, the not necessary. So that is the reason why um, the leaders of the Samagi uh, Janabalavegi decided that uh, there was really no uh, point in uh, going for this uh, meeting. And, so not, so, and, and only the TNA went, uh, nobody else. Uh, Dr. Harshra, uh, leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadasa, uh, had spoken to Prime Minister uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa on a previous occasion, not only once, but two occasions, with regard to COVID-19. Was the suggestion that was put forward by uh, the leader of the opposition adhered to or even given an ear uh, by the Prime Minister and the ruling party? The answer to that question is no. Uh, in fact, uh, the leader of the opposition and some senior members did meet once with the President and twice with the Prime Minister. A number of uh, proposals had been put forward um, and from what I understand, uh, there was callous disrespect for those requests, and uh, they didn't see uh, the need, uh, therefore, to attend uh, this meeting. Because, like I said before, um, a meeting of MPs uh, should be done for a purpose. 
there is no need to just sit and chat about uh, what's going on. Uh, it is well known. Uh, every day we are briefed by uh, the government spokespeople what's happening. What parliamentarians need to do, like my uh, colleague mentioned earlier, is to uh, amend or bring in new uh, laws uh, in order to fight the, uh, the pandemic, both in terms of health issues and in terms of the fallout of uh, the health issues into the economy. That is the objective of, of the legislature. There is no real point in sitting in the conference room of temple trees. So <clears throat> uh, the, I feel it was just a dilution itself of the, um, the, the members or, or former members of parliament. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Harsh De Silva, uh, candidate of the Samak Jana Balavegya. Uh, we now move our attention to um, Tarka Balasuri, candidate of the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna. Um, Tarka, interestingly, if you look at the last two months, uh, the president has made two statements uh, to the nation, and uh, the prime minister has uh, made uh, two statements, including one uh, statement that was issued by him uh, a few days ago as well on, on, on the meeting in question that was held today. Now you begin to ponder as to who is running the country. Uh, we had a similar situation with uh, President Maitri Palasiri Sena and uh, Ranil Vikram Singh at one point, and that is probably one of the reasons that uh, Gotabe Rajpaks emerged victorious at the last presidential election as well, because people did not want to have that divided uh, mentality within uh, the political hierarchy in Sri Lanka. But right now it seems there is a political tug of war between the two brothers. Yes, says the general public. This is a general notion. But I, I, can't, I can't obviously um, substantiate when you say the general public, but the general notion is that there may be cracks within uh, no, I disagree. the two I mean, uh, I, I, dis I disagree. I think maybe certain people want to build a narrative saying that you know there's a, uh, a conflict between the two or whatever, and it's very clear that the president and the cabinet is running the uh, running the country. So the prime minister, uh, he, he as a responsible citizen of the nation, you know, there was a lot of uh, misconceptions and uh, misconstructions uh, about the, the coronavirus and it certainly certain politicians deliberately uh, made up certain st statements. I think yesterday or day before, partly Champaka said that the, actually the number of deaths is much higher than, <laughs> the, uh, than what has been recorded without uh, substantiating statements like that. Such statements are completely irresponsible at a time like that. If we had evidence and then if we backed it up with evidence, I think, you know, there would have been no right. So I think that I think the whole meeting was held uh, to explain the situation and uh, how the government apparatus is being used to uh, fight COVID-19. So I think there was nothing wrong with, you know, the Prime Minister is well within his right uh, to, uh, to have, have a meeting. So Dr. Harshley Silva said that callous disregard with regard to the recommendations put forward by the leader of the opposition when he met uh, Prime Minister uh, Mahinder Rajapaksa, if so, what is the whole purpose of attending such a meeting? And it's a valid argument. Uh, I don't know. He, uh, I didn't attend the meeting, so but I think if uh, Mr. Sajid Premadasa says that you know you should recommend hydroxy and chlorine uh, with uh, and see what acetoromine or whatever, if he uh, recommends these drugs should be taken, yes, there will be careless disregard for such a stupid uh, suggestions. And I think what we see is like, you know, for the last two and a half months, uh, last, last two months, Sajid Premadasa has been stirring up the people. He's just trying to stir up the emotions of the people. And if you look at the, how the UMP has behaved... Father, uh, before you proceed, I just want to uh, mention to you that it's very important to give uh, respect uh, to the people who are not here on the show. Yeah, I'll substantiate myself. When, yeah, I'll sub I'll, say, I'll, I'm, I'm trying that, to substantiate. When you, when you articulate yeah. yourself as making a stupid statement, I don't think that is right because uh, you have to respect the it views is, it expressed is, uh, by uh, all uh, parliamentarians, including the leader of did the Did or did not Mr. Sajid Premadasa say hydroxy, to use hydroxyl chloroquine? And is that not a stupid statement? Is that a responsible statement from a leader of the opposition? Did or did not Mr. Rajasa Seneviratna 
and the um, Sarat Fonseca, even before any deaths have occurred, say that there were three deaths. Isn't that trying to uh, crea create a, a fewer psychosis? So if you if you look at the you know then then did or did not Mr. Rangil Victim say, Singer say that you know after the 30th, 30th of April government would not have any financial powers? So all these all these the the narrative that the UMP has been taking is that you know th this is out of control. We can't hold elections and uh, we can't uh, you know a, a lot of people are going to die and to create a fewer psychosis. Yeah, and then we see a lot of countries, we see, you know, countries like uh, Spain opening up with over 250,000 infected and close to 30,000 dead. Uh, we see Italy opening up, construction is in, in full effect now. We see all the European countries opening up. But whereas our opposition has not acted responsibly. So I, I, they are just trying to stir up. Did, did or did not Mr. Sajid Prenadasa say that, you know, we should give 60,000 for each family? Uh, can, if, if, if that was the position, why didn't, you know, the UNP during its, uh, the five-year tenure, why didn't, why didn't they give any money? Uh, they leave the economy in such a bad state. You know, the economy was, uh, when, uh, when uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa gave, uh, gave the country, it was around, the, the economic growth was around 75 uh, and then uh, the, within the last five years, the economy declined drastically. And uh, our economic growth was less than Afghanistan's when the country was handed over to uh, uh, Gotabe Rajpaksa. So given that, given the, the background circumstances, making statements even before people die, that you know, so many people have died, or saying you, you should use certain amount, this, this type of medicine when it has not been medically proven, or, or saying that you know there's no financial powers uh, after the 30th of April. Uh, Taki, so, you mentioned about Italy, you spoke about Spain, and then you said those countries are now open. Are you suggesting up, in any I way? Are you suggesting in any way yeah. that Sri Lanka should come out of this from this lockdown, and henceforth an election? Is prudent at this time? No, I'm not. I'm not talking about the elections. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that you know that if Sri Lanka has. I think uh, as of today, uh, 720 or some uh, patients. Uh, 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 and then uh, out of that also, I think 180 odd have been cured. So uh, you are talking about about 520 uh, patients. And uh, we have had eight deaths. We had another unfortunate death. But if you look at it comparatively with the, uh, the rest of the world, uh, uh, then we are so far OK. And then we also need to take into account the economy. There are, there are about you know 1.5 million to 2 million uh, daily wage earners, and then we uh, the, the government cannot continue uh, continue this uh, lockdown forever. So do you do you agree with the fact that is raised by the opposition when they say you can get rid of the lockdown, but an election is not prudent for the 20th of June this year? No, the, whether the election is is to be held on the 20th of June this year or not is not a decision for me to make. It's a decision for it's a decision for the election commission to make. But what I'm saying is whether we have election or not. Let's let's assume that we don't we don't have an election for a moment. But nonetheless, we need to or we need to open up the economy with the new precautions. Very quickly before I move to Iran, uh, Taraka. Do you all fear that if an election is held at a later date, that the popularity of this government will diminish? Is that why most uh, individuals in the government ranks are saying that elections should be held? No, I mean, r right now the UMP is playing politics. Because let's say if we have a, if we have an election, they'll say you're playing with you know uh, people's life. If you don't have election, they'll say then you're violating the constitution. If you call the parliament, they'll say you know so much expenditure, like so many millions are going for the parliament. Why are you calling call, recalling the parliament or whatever? So whatever we do, they are in a position to criticize. And I think you know we we know there was a split in the UMP, and then we know that you know there's, uh, they're desperately trying to uh, revoke the uh, the, uh, the uh, nominations in order to maybe for them to join. Either way, you know, we defeated the uh, we, we defeated the UMP when UMP, JVP, uh, the TNN, all of them supported their candidate, Thank you very much. and and we are we are we are uh, yeah, confident that Thank you, you know, much. with uh, the president being in power and the people know that at a, at a crisis situation you can't have a prime minister in one side and you can't have the president on another side. So uh, we are confident that you know we uh, that uh, we can win an election. Thank you very even much. Even at a later uh, date. Thank you very much, Tarik Balsuri, candidate of the Sri Lanka Podujana Paramana, just to remind you 
Uh, the two members who are sitting here today are not representing the United National Party, but representing uh, the new party which is formed by uh, Sajid Premadasa, that is the Samagi Jana Balavege. So I'm not going to uh, level the accusation that you leveled at the UNP directly to uh, Iran or Harsha for that matter. Um, uh, Iran, interestingly, I want to roll the same question that I rolled to uh, Tarika. I asked him uh, whether or not they're scared uh, that their popularity will diminish. I'm going to pose the same question to you as well. Do you all fear an election? Is that why most members of the opposition are saying, we convene the parliament and get some time uh, for them to uh, play some chess right now with the people's minds to gain some votes ahead of a next election? Thank you for inviting. Uh, nice to participate after a while. Uh, <clears throat> I think the first thing I would like to say is that uh, Sri Lanka and the world is facing an unprecedented situation. COVID-19 is an unprecedented situation. And therefore, uh, it needed the highest priority because saving lives is the highest priority. Uh, I'm very confident that we as a country, we are going to get over this. I know it's very fearful when you look at what's happening around, but we are going to get over this. And uh, our uh, disagreements have actually been on the way the crisis has been managed. That's where the disagreements have been. Uh, it was Mr. Sajid Premadasa, the leader of the opposition, who very early on in this debate in January, when others were not even talking about it, came into parliament and actually talked about COVID-19 and the coronavirus. I, I mean, I must admit that even I was not focusing on January on the coronavirus, but he was focusing on it. Others are putting pressure for him to use that parliamentary time to speak about other subjects. But he said, no, this is a very, very serious issue. And he was being advised on it, and he was talking about it. Our issue with the government, right, has been on mismanagement. When he brought it up, right, the, the health minister said something like, how can you lock down a country? There are only 28 uh, you know, people who are affected by this disease. Now, as was said today on the show, there is 718, no, I don't know the exact number at this hour, but two hours ago, it was about 718 uh, people who were affected, about 178 or nine had recovered, and uh, reported deaths were up by one from seven to eight. Now, one thing I might, might say about this is, these numbers were low, and we said it from the beginning. And the reason why people said it from the beginning logically is because the detection rates, right, and the infection rates, there was a divergence. Because the infection rates were suspected to be higher, but if you don't test sufficiently, right, you won't really detect it. That is why, while we were trying to flatten the curve, right, even after a lockdown, the curve began to actually rise even after the lockdown. So it was all about a management issue, you see. So we were basically having a health problem, and right at the beginning, Right? We, 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 we thought of it like, uh, unlike a health problem, like as if it was a security problem. Right? And then I must say this about the GMOA, whom sometimes I don't agree with all their views. But here, they actually played a role and got the government focused on the fact that this is a health problem. And therefore, you need to listen to what the health professionals are actually saying. And I think it, has, it took a while. It's the delay that is the issue. Because these numbers, comparing numbers right, with different, different countries, I must say this, I thank God that these, these numbers, if you compare it with other countries, right, could have been much worse, right? No, but, but, Iran, but, Iran, yeah. but the number could have been actually zero. Yeah. The number could have been zero, right? Iran, and that's initially, why... initially, the GMO has said that yeah. uh, uh, the country is not in a conducive situation or environment to yeah. hold an election. However, yeah. a few days ago, the GMO has said we are on the right track and uh, the situation yeah. will improve in the next few days. So yeah. there's no cherry picking. So yeah. the GMO is in favor yeah. of holding an election on the 20th of June. Yeah, so I, 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 I'm not commenting on whether it should be 20th of June or 20th of July, only for one reason. We are ready for an election. All we are saying is let the health professionals actually make the decision whether the country is conducive for an election because we are going to put people at risk we are going to put government servants at risk who have to conduct the election. So that, let, let the health professionals decide that. 
if they say that this country is conducive for it and they are willing to take the responsibility for it, we are ready to face an election. But we don't want, we want to put people first and then the election back. But if it is prudent to push the election back a month or two or three months or whatever that health professionals see, we will actually go with it. So my main issue has been this right along. My main issue has been that I, in my language, I will say, I thank God, right? Others might say, I thank nature, right? Because some situations like having a warm temperature, living in a, in a country which has a heat, it may be, thankfully, because of the preventive medical system this country has had over 50, 60 years, it may be to do vaccinations. I don't know. I'm not a health professional. But there are natural factors have also favored. Because if you look at the Asian continent, right, the number of infected and deaths and all have been low. It's been mainly high in Europe, in the US, and in other environments. Thank so you very much. so we, we are very, very glad for that. So it's a mismanagement that we are really being critical. We were silent for four weeks. For four weeks, we didn't say a single word. It was after that we decided and that we cannot be silent. And once the date of the election was announced, you all were silent for four weeks. But when the date of the election was announced, uh, you all made a huge uh, hue and cry about it. It's not only that, because the curve was not coming down and the curve was rising. Thank, thank and we also much. had a responsibility. Thanks, thanks a lot. Now, we, of course, will uh, grill the four of you uh, later on the show when the journalist question and answer session begins right now. On to my immediate left is Charles and Benedict who is also a law student. And on to my far left is Nadim Majid, um, who is a journalist uh, attached to News First for a very long time. So let's start off uh, with uh, Charlotte. Thank you very much, Shamir, for the opportunity. Um, my first question uh, goes out to uh, Tharaka Balasura. You're here representing uh, the government. Uh, there is contention on when the election can be held. Date is scheduled for the 20th of June. I want a short answer from you for this question, uh, given the fact that if the election is not being able to be held on the 20th of June, and if it keeps on getting postponed, and if the situation is not conducive, how long is the government planning on running this country without a parliament? Until, until the election is called. Until the election, the election is, is called. called. So, yeah. so even if it is, uh, say, God forbid, uh, another year, yeah. maybe two years, yeah. still the government is planning on running the country yeah, without the, a legislature. The question which we need to look at is, yeah, I mean, I don't know whether the uh, Harsha and Iran would agree. Can we really bring it to zero patients in, a, say, in six months' time? So if we can't, you know, bring it to zero patients, and now the, the medical, um, the fraternity is of the view that, you know, we, we won't be able to bring it to a zero nation. And I also disagree with Iran. I'm, I'm not, I'm not yeah, uh, convicting that uh, yeah. argument, but I'm saying how long is the government planning? Until a conducive but situation, it's, it's, not medical it's not something for the government to plan. It's hmm. something for the election com commission to de uh, decide. It's an independent election You're commission. You're passing the ball to the elections commission now. No, there's nothing to pass the ball. It's in the constitution, you know, hmm. uh, who's, uh, and, uh, and the, the powers are very well divided. That's why we have an independent uh, commission. Now, right. you know, if we, if we uh, interfere, then you'll be saying that, you know, the president and the, the, the government is interfering uh, in or pressuring the election commission to hold the elections or not to hold the elections. Right. Okay. Tarf, you so, brought this conversation to a very good point about the Constitution and the provisions in the Constitution. Now, it was, I'd, I'd like to direct this uh, question to um, uh, Attorney at Law, Associate Prem Jant, of course. Uh, uh, sir, you, the government said that uh, the president does not have the legal authority to reconvene parliament again. You, the government said that there is absolutely no way for parliament to be reconvened. Uh, and now I know that the government is in favor of not reconvening parliament, but just for argument's sake, uh, that argument does not stand ground because according to the interpretation ordinance, a proclamation that has been issued by a government authority can be revoked uh, by the same uh, person. So if the president issued uh, a proclamation dissolving parliament, the president can withdraw that. If push comes to shove and there is a possibility of the constitution being violated, would the president, would the government advise the president to use his powers under the interpretation ordinance and uh, revoke this proclamation? No, I think uh, we need not go, uh, we need not, uh, go to the, the interpretation ordinance. I'll just... Uh, uh, cite uh, uh, the, the articles in the constitution, actually the president took steps to dissolve the parliament under article 71 proviso hmm. and uh, under article 5, uh, 70 sub article 5, 
a proclamation dissolving parliament shall fix a date or dates for the election of members of parliament and so on. According to the five A, uh, president made the proclamation. Then the argument uh, uh, forwarded by some of the opposition members of parliament and the uh, parties, uh, article uh, sub article seven of the uh, article seventy, mm. the president uh, can uh, reconvene the parliament, mm. right? So then. Uh, this uh, sub article 7 of article 70 is not uh, uh, interpret in isolation. You have to connect it with the article 155 4 mm -hmm. right, of the constitution. That is chapter 18a refers to national, uh, sorry, uh, uh, chapter 18 public security. So then uh, article 155 refers to the public security. Mm. 155 sub article 2, the power to make emergency regulations mm. under the public security ordinance like that was continued. But the president has not declared a state that of... Is, that is what I am going to point out. Then uh, I refer to article 4, uh, sub article 4 of 155, mm. uh, 1. If such pro proclamation is issued after the dissolution of parliament, such proclamation shall operate as a summoning of parliament to meet on the 10th day after such proclamation. Right. Unless the proclamation appoints an earlier date for the meeting, which shall not be less than three days from the date of the proclamation and the parliament to summon shall be kept in session until the expiry or uh, revocation or such or any further proclamation or until the conclusion of the general election. Mr. Prabhupada, I understand Wait, that argument. Right. So you're saying so, no, no. My, my position is only the public security ordinance is in in uh, uh, action. Mm -hmm. Then only president. So uh, public security ordinance. Then has only been president there may. Emergency. It very clearly it says if at any time after the dissolution of parliament the president is satisfied that an emergency has arisen. Mm -hmm. So this is no the emergency refers. To the emergency under the public security so, order. So, so, so the, are you trying to say that COVID-19 is not a state of emergency? No, here, here, here it doesn't refer to the COVID-19 such situation. It refers to specifically the emergency situation like the president can like declare a state of emergency. Like what, he what we experienced for last uh, before 2009, 20, for 28 years, I can remember uh, after the dissolution of some parliaments hmm. before 2009, right? We uh, the parliament was reconvened to extend the emergency regulation. So uh, 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 that, Dr. Is Hatha, the, that is the it practical seems like way of a valid argument that is brought forward by uh, Minister Premajan. If there is no state of emergency, there is no need to reconvene parliament. So that's a valid point. Well, I mean, I don't know how you interpret emergency. So is tsunami not an emergency? Is a natural disaster not an emergency? I think somebody needs to uh, sort of uh, interpret it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't agree with uh, with my okay. colleague here because, you know, doctrine of separation of powers, right? We have the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. And what is fundamental is there has got to be checks and balances. And it is very clear that if the president dissolves or when the president dissolves uh, the parliament he has to go by this constitution and he has to act by abide by this constitution otherwise he could have uh, dissolved the parliament uh, soon after he won the presidential election he didn't have to wait till uh, the second of march he did so because it is written here that he cannot do so until uh, four and a half years and it is also written here that if you dissolve parliament, you have to reconvene the new parliament within three months. So whatever else is said, the way I understand it is that given the separation of powers and the need for checks and balances, that this country can be without a parliament for a maximum amount of three months, maximum period of three months. And it is said once, it is said twice, three times, and it is reiterated in this document at multiple points in multiple articles and sub-articles. So the issue then is, 
So I'll ask you a question. I'll ask my colleagues a question here, former colleagues. Uh, when the elections commissioner uh, wrote to the president and told him, uh, Excellency, I have a problem, right? I cannot hold the election on a date uh, so that the new parliament can be reconvened within the three months, which is the constitutional obligation. And what did the president say? He didn't even reply that letter. His secretary wrote to the elections commission and said, you know, we are not going to uh, seek the advice or ask for an interpretation of the, the, the constitutional provision from the Supreme Court. My question is, is that responsible? Because if it is only him who can get clarity, shouldn't it be him who should ask and avoid a constitutional crisis? So, uh, Mr. So, so, let, let uh, me yeah, answer yes, that you question. You can respond to that, yes. Because the thing is, my position is, President need not refer to uh, the Supreme Court at that time. Because the, under Article 129, right? Uh, Article 129, President can refer uh, to uh, the Supreme Court if at any time it appears to that's the right, President that's of the right. Republic that a uh, law of fact has arisen. Under Article 129, but it is not necessary at this juncture because the, 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 commission, uh, the, pre, uh, the President of the Election Commission wrote to the President and asked to get an interpretation. But if the President is of the opinion it is not necessary, he need not refer it to the uh, Supreme Court. Only the President uh, is of the opinion that he should refer it to the uh, Supreme Court at that time, then only President can refer it. It's no, but okay, Mr. Wait, Premier, wait, is it let, responsible let, for let, the President let, not let, to be let your me, let, me, let me finish my question. It is a consultative jurisdiction, right? Then, President need not write, uh, reply to the commissioner. Normally, customary, it is President's secretary write to the commissioner or uh, speak of the parliament or anybody. That is the, that is the normal, the, the, the custom. And a letter which was given to the press before it Yeah, it, Yes, it, a letter was released to the press even before the president received that letter. That is a different matter. But then the president's secretary referred to the election law and then accordingly, uh, the, the, the election commission took steps to uh, Mr. The pro declare the, is, declare the date like of election yeah, but uh, by, like by using wait, wait, by using the section 24.3 of the act number 1 of 1981. Yeah, so in a situation like this, so I, I, agree with, I, I agree with the constitutionality of all this. Uh, there is no question about it, uh, the <coughs> way in which lawyers have come on the show and interpreted the way that they want to, it to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised, Minister. I was watching. You uh, being an attorney at law also interpreting <laughs> some sections of the Constitution. Yes. But we've seen in the past, it has been like cherry picking. You see, you've seen Chandrika Bandarana Kumar Tunga uh, seeking the interpretation of the Supreme Court with regard to a term in office. Uh, you saw that with uh, Mahindra Raj and, Paksa as and well. And she ended up with uh, the same, reduction the of funding. Same again. scenario in uh, uh, <laughs> Bifel, uh, former President Mahindra Raj Paksa as well. He went to the Supreme yeah. Court to get an interpretation of his term in office. Yes. You saw that happening with Maitri Palasiri Sen as well, unfortunately. And he too fell one year short. So you've seen respective presidents going to the Supreme Court to receive interpretations. So you can put a complete stop to this problem if the president goes to the Supreme Court, get an interpretation from the Supreme Court with regard to the constitutionality of the law, and then get the Supreme Court to interpret the constitution, and henceforth abide by that. And that's about it. End if, of the, the story. if the president is of the opinion, the law is very clear, and he, he, he needs not go to a Supreme Court under Article 129 and get the interpretation, so he's, he referred to the election <coughs> law and then send a, uh, his secretary send the letter to the commission. Mr. Mr. Premajant, aside from the legal argument, right? let's say that if the president is not of the opinion, then he doesn't need to. Uh, you heard Dr. Ashley Silva say that. I mean, the constitution appears to be pretty clear cut on the fact that you cannot run the country, you cannot have, you cannot have a, a climate where there is no parliament for longer than three months at any, at any time. Now, we were talking about holding an election as well. Let's say uh, Shalin was going about the scenario that maybe if the situation does not get better, that uh, 
you continue for six months, maybe a year. I mean, can you even have a free and fair election in a climate where you're <laughs> ruling by executive fiat and pretty much martial law? Uh, what I can say is now uh, you can have a free and fair election if the government is optimistic that we can control the situation uh, as we expected. That's uh, within next couple of weeks, of course, you can see. We were explained today the, uh, the two officials uh, who are involved uh, with the management of the crisis and the members of the task force explain how they control so far. Unfortunately, except the uh, Navy uh, person's uh, 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 infected people, I think by now uh, you find only one or two patients a day, right? It was controlling. And I disagree with uh, uh, my learned friend, uh, my colleague Iran, that the crisis management is, I think, up to the standard. That is my position, right? Just and on, on that, Mr. Vikramaratna, uh, you spoke about this being a mismanaged uh, crisis. Uh, when you look at uh, concerns that have been raised around the printing of money and uh, the raising of taxes, uh, take for example the, the duty on, uh, on petroleum, uh, then uh, other levies that uh, have been... Can all of this be done when there is no parliamentary oversight? Okay. Yeah, this... Uh why I said it's a mismanagement, right? And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a health mismanagement. Then you have an economic mismanagement. And now they are creating a constitutional mismanagement. So they are one health issue, because you are not properly handling it, you are hearing various, various consequences that are coming out of it. And the reason why I'm very, very cautious with this party that's presently in power is because this is the party, right, who disregarded the separation of powers earlier, and the chief justice of this country was removed. This is the party, right, that was involved in a constitutional coup just two years ago. This is the party which has that legacy, which is now leading the country into another unnecessary, unne we are having an unnecessary debate. What's this debate about? Let's act within the constitution. In any constitutional democracy, Right? There are three pillars of government. The executive, you have the legislature, and you have the judiciary. Right? The, the judiciary cannot be overpowered by parliament, and parliament cannot be overpowered by the executive. This is the way in which you will protect society. This thing has to be handled within the whole constitutional process and the law. We are just debating it and discussing it. Look, look at the crisis we have created. Look at the economic crisis that we have created. We are creating loss for businesses. Already big businesses and small businesses are announcing that they are laying off staff. People don't have incomes, right? There are lots of people who are self-employed on daily wages. They don't have incomes. You go to the constituencies. I, 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 I am in an election, and the election prevents me from doing some things openly, like taking care of the poor because I don't want to violate the election laws. But I must admit, I didn't go and meet any of the poor. But I had to personally get involved in actually sourcing for the poor. People are struggling. We are debating about 5,000 rupees and you know, with once a month or twice a month or whatever. So there is a huge economic cost that, that has been caused with the way this has been managed. That is why the health crisis was managed differently. The economic cost would have come down. I'm saying to the government, look here, you, 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 the reason you need it, money is a taxpayer's money. It's a citizen's money. This is not Madha Midula money, not Madha Mulana money. This is the taxpayer's money, right? And therefore, whether it's expenditures or taxes, right, the people's representatives in any democracy in the world have to basically approve it. Just take a simple thing. 350,000 A-level students have to sit the examination. Right? What is happening? There are no classes, no laboratories. Those who can afford it are getting online courses. But what about the poor? They don't have the money to pay for the data to get the online classes. The poor are suffering more through this situation. This is why I'm saying it's being mismanaged. I'm asking the government not to give 5,000 rupees. 
to look at the A-level students immediately and provide them free data, because the crisis has so many dimensions. That is why, though they are priding themselves, Iran, is people Iran, don't know what bad but management Iran, is. Example, uh, Tarek or uh, yeah, yeah. Can, let, can let come me, out and say, yeah, yeah. Let me ask your government has... Let me answer to some yeah, of the uh, questions, uh, of yeah, course. Uh, so I'll, far... I'll come back to you in a minute, Minister. Yeah. Uh, you, they could probably say, uh, your government, when yeah. you all came into power in 2015, you all promised to provide free Wi-Fi uh, yeah. to people, yeah. and that did not happen. Yeah. Uh, you all provided good governance. Uh, there was uh, the central bank bond controversy as a result of that. So there is somewhat of stigma in, on both sides. Uh, um, uh, uh, I, 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 cannot, I cannot disagree with some of the things you are saying. You talked about the bond transaction. I have always maintained, including from this, this Face the Nation program, right? those who are guilty must be punished. If the accusation is that when we were in government, we were trying to cover it up, I am calling on the present government to speed that justice process. Those who are guilty for the bond transaction must be punished. I'm so, telling them to speed up so the process. Tarka, yeah. that's a good question. Now, this yeah. is a time that um, Gotabe Rajapaksa, uh -huh. along with the Prime Minister, <laughs> gets down students who are stranded yeah. in other countries, yeah. uh, like in India, uh, like United Kingdom. You see, you see this happening. Why not bring down Arjun Mahendran <laughs> if, that, if that's the case? Uh, he probably is also standard in Singapore. <laughs> Why not? Action has not yet been taken by your government as well in terms of the bond transaction, unfortunately. So if we, if we uh, take certain action, uh, let's say if we um, take action beyond the legal means, then, it, then Iran will say it's a dictatorship. Judicial okay. action, uh, please. And, uh, and I think, you know, since Iran did mention about uh, our legacy, I don't want to mention about the UMP's legacy of, you know, having a referendum and postponing elections. I don't want to mention about UMP's legacy of the 1989 elections. So, uh, so I mean, uh, but, but you're talking, Iran keeps talking about mismanagement. Okay, I mean, it's pretty rich coming from, from their government, you know, with the, with the Easter attacks. There was over 90 warnings and, you know, and the president, the former president saw it in the papers and, the, you know, the, uh, nobody did anything about it. And and now they are talking about management. You just look at the figures. I'm saying, you know, eight deaths is too much. Even a single death is too much. But, uh, but relatively to the rest of the world, you know, we are doing well. I like to ask from Iran, what are the countries with zero COVID patients? Uh, and uh, whether he genuinely be believes that, you know, we will have zero COVID patients, zero uh, COVID patients uh, in uh, three or four um, months. So, I mean, I think except for like North Korea and Microsia and, you know, one of all the small islands, there's no country with zero COVID patients. So now UMP is beating the old drum, saying mismanagement, mismanagement. You have, for the last four and a half years, we saw the government not functioning. The prime minister and the president didn't see eye to eye. They didn't even want, they didn't even want to look at one another. And now, uh, you know, it's... Now that we have you know, eight deaths and we have over 700 patients, which is relatively good compared, compared to the rest of the world. I'm not Arka, saying... You Arka, you, about... Just, uh, just yeah. one second, Shalin. On this issue of mismanagement, you spoke about the previous government where there's disharmony between uh, the prime minister and the president. Okay, with this current government where there is harmony, let's say, amongst all of those who are in government, there was a lot of confusion over the past couple of days regarding announcements uh, pertaining to the curfew. Uh, yesterday there was a, a statement about uh, the NIC uh, numbers, how the last digit, that's applicable for areas that are in <coughs> Today, an addition is made to that, saying that actually it's only applicable from the 11th of May. There was a, a very strangely worded uh, statement that came uh, a few days ago, if I'm not mistaken, singly. it took a few reads to figure out what it was trying to say. Mm. I mean, the, the communication that is being coming, the sharing of information on the part of the government, that has been found wanting, hasn't it? Maybe that's an area which we need to improve. And uh, I'm not saying that, you know, uh, you know the <coughs> government's process is uh, not without fault. So let's say, you know, the distribution of the 5,000 rupees we see in TV, some people, uh, you know, making complaints and all that stuff. But we need to, this, this is a difficult situation. You know, the, the whole world is locked down. You know, if you if you talk to the uh, if, if most of the you know the economists in the world are saying that you know this is unprecedented. This is going to be worse than you know the Great Depression. 
And then uh, I think you know the uh, the chief economist for IMF said to, today or yesterday that uh, uh, there'll be a 3.2 uh, the the GDP the world GDP will reduce <coughs> by about, uh, uh, three three percent. So on, on the this subject is a, of so economic so management. So, so this is a difficult situation, and in that difficult situation, I think you know if Iran is saying you know we need to do that, we need to bring the industries, we need to create the jobs. Okay, and, and UMP for the last you know f last uh, four and a half years during that tenor, Sarg, they, 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 the they lost uh, 350,000 jobs. What, what is the focus of the government right now at this point of time? Tell me what is the focus of the government this point the of time? The focus of the government is right to uh, uh, the focus of the government government is to flatten the curve. Right, flatten, uh, the fl curve. flatten flatten the curve, and when when uh, when uh, at the earliest possible uh, to slowly uh, so restart a, the a restart time the country. Like this, where you articulate uh, as a former state minister also uh, that uh, it's important <coughs> to flatten the curve. The government's <coughs> top priority should be on that. Why does the cabinet approve a 31.7 billion Sri Lankan rupees on a highway project? The, the highway project won't be starting immediately. No, no, why, why, why? So the cabinet won't be uh, sitting later on. Uh, but that is very evident if an election comes into play. Uh, depending on the government which is in power, there would be a, a different cabinet altogether. At this point of time, if the government is focused on, uh, on, on, on flattening the curve, why go ahead? And approve 31.7 billion of the public money on a highway project. Okay, so the first of all, when the UMP started the highway pro project, they didn't start stage one or stage three. They started. started no, no, the, my question is so, not so about. Let me finish, but let me uh, answer the question. Yeah, okay. And if you keep interrupting, I won't no, be no, able no to problem, answer. No problem. So they, they started with the uh, they, they started with the uh, the second section. Okay, <laughs> now this project has to be completed. Okay. And just because you approve it, you a cabinet approve approve it doesn't mean that you know 31 31 billion will be allocated tomorrow. So uh, you know when 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 the when the time comes and you know when when the country starts back uh, to its uh, normalcy, uh, we will start with the projects. But immediately, so, immediately. Harsh, interesting point. You know, uh, Tark is saying 31.7 billion rupees was allocated by the uh, cabinet or given the nod by the cabinet not to allocate the money right now, at a future date. Do you agree that the government has done this in good faith? Well, if they don't want to do it now, they want to do it in some future date, why don't you wait for that future date and do it then? So there is, there is contradiction in Tarka's statement. Tarka says the <coughs> objective is, the focus is to flatten the curve. And he's saying in some later date, some day down the road, we will spend that money. So, so I don't understand why it had to be done then. Because the way I see it is, there is no parliament. There is no oversight. There are no committees. Right? So, in such a vacuum, the president can do whatever he wishes with the caretaker cabinet. This constitution very clearly says that the absolute total power of finance is with the legislature, not with the executive. So, the, 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 the co co conflict is there. Now, for instance, uh, whether he can continue to spend money after the 30th of April, whether there is provision for that. I see all kinds of statements being made. But like Iran said, that this is, I don't think, is the forum to discuss it. And I think we need to go to uh, court and, and get a determination once and for all. Whether, as he says, the President can run this country without a parliament for six months, one year, two years, for whatever uh, duration that the President so wishes. If that is the case, then you can also run this country without a judiciary. Why do you need a judiciary? You can shut it down also. I think that is uh, misinterpreted. No, no, no. Yeah. I am not saying that, misinterpreted. Yeah. What I am saying is, if, uh, if, if separation... He didn't say that... No, uh, no, no separation. No, no, of course he uh, said uh, it. No, 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 we, no, to his question... That is wrong in no, 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 why not? No, no, come on. No, no, I mean, I am not it, making it, it up. He asked the question, how long? I think Tarakas, Tarakas' exact words were, for as long as it takes to hold an election. Yes. So it, and 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 so we don't know when that is. No, no. It I can be when the months, election commissioner decides. Decides. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. technically, yeah. by 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 okay, factual okay. means, so, practically so, yeah. that means as long as if the elections commission, if the government of Sri Lanka is not in a position to create an environment 
that the elections commission sees fit is conducive to hold an election, they can't hold an election. So until such time when the government creates an environment where the election can be held and the election commission also announces the date and goes through the procedure, then that did. I mean, you did not specify a time period saying one year, six months, two years, but as long as it takes for the election to be held. On that note itself, uh, Susan Prevention, no, you uh, said... Uh, Sir, you need to let uh, Harsha explain yes. and then I want Sorry. to get a response from Minister as well on that. So, yeah, Harsha... Yeah. Yeah, see, w normally what happens is a country uh, approves uh, a budget, usually in November, for the coming year. Now, what happened was with the uh, coup, October coup in 2018, a budget for 2019 uh, wasn't presented and passed in 2018 November. It was only approved in April of 2019. And then after the end of uh, the financial year on 31 uh, December the president had new president had been elected but the previous government that was our government had got a vote on account passed on the 23rd of October and that vote on account was effective from the 1st of January to the 30th of April now <clears throat> The Constitution very clearly uh, provides for it because it assumes that the election will be held within three months of uh, three months of time. You know that duration. So because of that seventy point whatever the article seventy sub article five six seven uh, read along with one forty eight one forty nine, it makes sense, right? Now, given this extraordinary situation, when you don't know when the election is going to be held, and we need money to fight this uh, pandemic, both in terms of health and in terms of economics, like Iran said, so many people have lost jobs. I was just asking a person just before this program began from the Parallel uh, uh, Association, and he said over 100 companies have thus far filed uh, with the Labor Commissioner seeking to, uh, you know, relieve uh, their staff. So many people I know um, have either been uh, told, look, you take a 60-70% pay cut or you are on no pay leave. Sri Lankan Airlines just the other day said 400 employees ha had to go home. I did an analysis and in that analysis I showed immaterial of whether you are a, a, a daily wage employee or a, a, a monthly paid executive, almost everyone except for those in the public sector, 1.2 million, and some essential private sector workers, everybody else yeah. is so, at risk of losing their part of their income. So what is really necessary is income support, whether it is given as a grant like the 5,000 rupees to the, the low income earners or as long-term loans to companies so that they can continue to pay their employees. That is the focus. And the president cannot uh, allocate those monies because he so doesn't we have, have a, the we have a question for uh, Minister Sil Premajanda. I'll pose a question to you and then you can rebut the points uh, brought forward by uh, Dr. Harsha as well. Um, can the president in a state of emergency or so in a state of dissolution of parliament Raise additional revenue by way of taxes and levies, example, import duty on petroleum products, without such gazette being, without such gazette being approved by parliament within a period of 30 days. And now you can respond to that and then you can respond to... Uh, yeah. Now, as well. if you go to the Article 153, right, uh, where the president dissolves parliament before the appropriation bill for the financial year has passed into law, he may unless parliament shall have already made provision authorized the issue from the uh, consolidated fund and the expenditure of such sums as he may consider necessary for the public services until the expiry of a period of three months from the date on which the new parliament is summoned to meet. Right? So originally, uh, the original proclamation uh, says the parliament reconvened uh, to be reconvened on 14th of May. If we take as it is, then June, July, August, at least 14th of <coughs> August, if you go through the first proclamation, uh, the president can use this article and uh, uh, withdraw money from the consolidated account to run the public service. Right? 
that is the legal position. So, therefore, president or the government has not violated by issuing the proclamation or by using 153 to run the public service by utilizing the public funds. Then now, no question about wait. Can I, can I wait, just, wait. can I just. Uh, no, 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 yeah. no, wait, no. Uh, you can answer later. And at the same time, the similar situation, not only this time, because now we have a very unusual situation, not only in Sri Lanka, but globally. My friend said uh, uh, we are losing jobs and all that. You know, in the United States last week, it was estimated that 30 million jobs lost. Yeah, but 30 million have, jobs. They, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, they have wait, income support. Not, wait, wait. Then here, of course, government took steps uh, in uh, mid-March to relieve uh, private sector, public servants, and uh, small enterprises, medium and uh, uh, small enterprise and entrepreneurs like that. Of course, there are so many concessions are given by the government through banks and the financial institutions. You know, we have to consider all these facts, of course. They will take some time to recover, not only Sri Lanka, because we can't act in isolation. Because we need to improve again this, our this, exports, this is not what I'm garment saying. exports. Then the uh, the remittances uh, uh, sent by uh, our expatriates in, uh, especially in Middle East and all that, they also in trouble. And the uh, 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 you know uh, tourism industry. So as a result of Saharan uh, uh, attack the last year, so they couldn't prevent that. No, because they didn't have a, no no they that didn't that the previous the government they didn't have a they didn't have a. Uh, uh, so uh, forceful I, uh, Mr. intelligence Mr. service. Mr. In the Mr. I, I, I want what I, I want I want to quickly switch to uh, uh, Iran, who's also was a former banker. Now, interesting point, uh, Minister is bringing forth. He's saying that the government has already told that uh, through by banks and financial institutions to support individuals in Sri Lanka. So, will banks, commercial banks in Sri Lanka, go ahead? and do the needful as requested by the government, provide loans without collateral uh, for these individuals in question. I think you should ask that from the business people who are actually listening into this program. Right? And uh, clearly, I have the few who have been talking with me, right? uh, basically been saying that uh, it's not that the, the banks don't want to give them money, but the banks also have depositors whom they have to safeguard. So they also have basically two sides of a balance sheet to manage. And if the government is talking about giving any kind of subsidy, then they want something from the government to say that that subsidy will be repaid. Now this is a situation in which everybody has to come together and there has to be a sharing. But in that sharing, certainly you are not going to put depositors or the banking system at risk, where that will be absolute madness to do that because as long as we have a strong banking and a financial system, right, we can come out of the problem in the long run. This point I made about the, the mismanagement thing, I, I, right? I mean, from the beginning, I was saying it. I was not saying, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that there won't be COVID patients in the future. There, there will be COVID patients in the future. But the question is about, could we have actually minimized it? Uh, they are asking me about countries which have minimized it. Look at New Zealand. What they have done is islands like us, they closed their borders early. Right? When we were telling them to close the borders, they didn't. They want to go ahead with the, basically the nominations process. They wanted to make sure that VIP kids, I have a list here, but the VIP uh, kids who were, came into the country and it was kept open from China, from Australia, and from other places. I won't mention names, only for the reason that those, those, those ministers are not here. This is what I meant by really mismanagement. I'm coming to this issue about parliament. I'm not doing technical issues on the legality. Why it is needed, why it is needed is if you are real, don't mismanage it further. You need to do certain things now. You need to do something on the tax front. You need to do something on the moratorium front. You need to do something, you need to do something, as I said, in giving subsidies for education and things like that. You may have to do something to basically change the EPF, ETF laws even temporarily to put more cash flow in the hands of people immediately. So you're, you're suggesting that the former governor's suggestion to use the EPF funds is prudent? No, I, I, I mean, I, 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 all I'm saying is this. This government must decide exactly what the financial responses are going to be. As Dr. Harsha Silva just mentioned, 
right? Some other countries have given income support to the private sector. Whatever the, whatever the measures, all these measures will need legislators, representatives of the people to but approve. But how do you give income support when the country itself is almost on the verge of bankruptcy at present? No, uh, but but you, do you know something? It, it works it's like It's very this. easy to criticize being yeah. on the other fence of the... No, no, it... Uh, it, 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 it on the table. No, no, not, no, no, uh, no, I, I no, agree. But, 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 there, had, but there, had, there has to be a plan. There has to be a plan. And the macro picture needs to be clear. What is the macro picture? Are you going to be a more closed economy? Or are you going to be an economy which you have your international relations as well, and you're going to make use of it? Are markets important? Are markets unimportant? These are issues that the government has to decide. And if they are important, then you have to access debt markets, you have to access capital markets. Eventually, they have to see the macro picture. There is some stability in the macro picture. That's how the ratings will stabilize. That's how you, you are going to get this. But money. in terms of geopolitics, uh, we are present new, government new, new world order is, on the, is on the you right track. You can't they are talk very about close uh, with uh, China. <laughs> Good old days, close with marketing strategies and all that uh, nowadays. Giving money to the country, you know, uh, whereas uh, your government, which was in power, yeah. was more close to the West uh, than the Chinese. So it seems that this government is in the right footing in terms of their foreign relations, isn't it, Iran? I, and I, you all were, I, you all I, were I would, I would, not on the, on the right yeah, track in I, I terms of say that. attracting FDIs as well, because yeah. during your term in office for the last yeah. uh, four and a half years, yeah, I, I, there was very little foreign direct investment yeah. from the West. Yeah, I, 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 wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't say that, that somebody is pro this or somebody is pro that. Sri Lanka, essentially, its foreign policy has to be non-aligned. I mean, that's been established over a period of time, and that will have to continue to be, because that's also our non-aligned policy is also our security. You see, Sri Lanka's security doesn't depend on armed forces and guns. Sri Lanka's food security doesn't depend just on self-sufficiency. People have to see the distinction. What we need is security. What we need is food security. What we need is health security. That does not mean that you necessarily translate it into that we are going to do everything ourselves. Some people are coming to that conclusion very quickly. We have to be sensible about it. We're a small country. We're a small island. We have limited resources. We have been open to the world for centuries. And we have to find ways of basically getting back there in a very sensible way. Yeah. Tarika, this is why. Yeah. Tarika, uh, the former state minister uh, raised a very important allegation, uh, said that the borders were not closed to protect VIP uh, daughters and sons, uh, also ministers, um, and uh, nominations was in the uh, forefront as far as this government was concerned. If you look at even the president's statement uh, a few days before uh, COVID-19 really uh, struck and WHO declared uh, this to be a pandemic, you saw the president saying that uh, we cannot do uh, away with uh, this, we have to have an election. Uh, he said this, articulated this at the SARC leaders' uh, meeting as well, which was done via Skype. Uh, I, I want to respond to all these allegations. I mean, with that. hindsight, it, you know, everybody can say that, you know, we can do better. Okay. Uh, that's very easy for people to say. But, I mean, let's really look at the, the history and see. Well, even, the, the, the sorry, first... sorry, even President Trump said... Uh, uh, somewhere around uh, early January. No, but right? uh, <laughs> uh, during the whether, summer, whether Trump know, is know, making the right know, decision or not is, is a yeah, question but, mark globally. No, that is the num that is the uh, world number one country. But let's but let's not but, but let's and, not uh, talk uh, about uh, uh, power. US. But let's he talk said, about Sri Lanka. He said, yeah. right? No. But by, uh, he by also summer, asked people to inject right? themselves with bleach. Of course, that's what his prediction. You should also quote the New Zealand Prime Minister. I mean, since New Zealand was in 2019, New Zealand has done a fantastic job. No, no, doubt, no doubt yes. about it. Uh, but I mean, actually, the numbers in New Zealand is higher than Sri Lanka. The num number of deaths yes. in, in New Zealand is higher than Sri Lanka. Infected people, yes. 1,419. Now, uh, now and with, uh, with, 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 uh, with uh, all yeah. uh, what Iran has said, you know, the, uh, the first patient which we got was from January 27th. And before January 27th, we have had a, a we have established a COVID uh, task force with 22 members. And then we had price controls on things like surgical masks and all that, otherwise it was going to go out of fan. Then on, uh, I think, uh, uh, then I think January 11th, or, or the World Health Organization said that up to, until end of January, even the World Health Organization didn't say that there can be, you know, human-to-human uh, -human transfers. And mid-January, they said that, you know, there's a possibility of human-to-human uh, -human transfers. Okay, then 
uh, on the uh, first week of uh, the first week of March. Uh, then we uh, banned traveler, we quarantined uh, visitors from Iran, South Korea, and Italy. 11th, the first Sri Lankan was identified with uh, quarantine. Then 12th, you know, the, the 12th, uh, the schools were closed. And that, that particular statement which you said was made by the president on the 17th. But after the president made the, uh, made, you know, we made the statement, how quickly did he retract it or change, you know, uh, go for a lockdown? Now, I think that that is a sign of a courageous leader if he had made a wrong statement and then if he sees this is not the way forward then you then you uh, you know you, you change the policy and 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 my, my i also would like to ask the, the our opposition members one question now i would like to ask them Harsha, where what what constitutional provision is uh, president breaking deliberately what is the constitutional provision which president is making uh, is breaking deliberately and then we are all we are all talking about these constitutional provisions but i think the 126 uh, the article 126 six says that you know the supreme court has to uh, give, uh, decide a fundamental, fundamental rights. rights case in uh, two months now we know the fundamental rights case don't uh, don't get heard uh, what do you call it two, two months so, but there's a necessity. There's a necessity that uh, what happens after. So now you, as you pose the question to um, uh, Harsha, do yeah. you want uh, uh, Dr. Harsha to respond to that? Yeah. Yeah, I, please, mean, I, I mean, please. I mean, it's <laughs> it is about the separation of powers, Tarek. That's what I'm saying. I mean, we are a constitutional democracy, it is. So, right? So, this is not an autocratic. So, I'm, so I'm asking you. So, so therefore, so it I'm is asking a, you, exactly. what, what constitutional provision is president breaking? Okay. So like, if you if you, if you care to look at this okay. uh, 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 constitution yeah. in multiple places, it is reiterated that uh, this country can run without a parliament for a maximum period of three months. The, it, it is said I'll over and over question. again. Right? I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate my question. Right. What considerable portion is the president breaking? Right. So, therefore, the president has two choices, Taraka, the way I yeah. see it. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, my legal knowledge is limited. One is uh, to say, look, we are having an emergency. Right? So, therefore, let us uh, reconvene parliament. No, right? the, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute. That's so that is the prerogative. The that, must... that is the prerogative of the president. Yeah. Right? If he doesn't want to do that, he, he is yeah. okay not to do it. Yeah. But he very well is aware that by the 2nd of June, yeah. the parliament has to be reconvened because yeah. that is the time the third month ends. Right? right. So if the uh, Elections Commission is saying, look, we can't hold an election in order to have the parliament reconvene on the 2nd of June, then there obviously is some problem, right? So therefore, he needs to get advice from the judiciary, who is in this case the only uh, uh, authority that can give <coughs> advice to the president and the legislature what he has to do, because I don't know the answer. Right. I, I don't so know. So, so, just on so, the, I mean, just prior, said, just prior to the program, we just just shortly before the program, we were discussing about constitution and how sometimes constitutions can be overly prescriptive. And you you uh, we were uh, we were talking about how you need to look at the philosophy behind constitution. Yeah. I mean, Sri Lanka is a democratic govern is a democratic country. Yeah. I mean, if you ask the qu question, how can a government be run uh, for this long without a parliament? Uh, sure, if it's an authoritarian country, you can say you don't need a parliament. Let's just go ahead and do what we want anyway. Yeah. But given that this is a democratic country and our constitution is based on certain doctrines like the separation of powers, I mean, at the very least, maybe he's not violated uh, a specific provision in the constitution. That's for the courts to decide. But at the very least, isn't the president in violation of the spirit of the constitution? That's far. That's up to interpretation. Okay. Now, because from a political point of view, you know, is it uh, in the interest of the country to bring in a hostile parliament and then, you know, uh, basically stop whatever the? Work but is it a hostile parliament? You have commitments from 
the opposition parties, all of the opposition okay. parties, commitments that can, they will support. You know, we have past experience. Commitments can come. You know, they, they can say whatever, but we have to work work with, within the political reality of it. Okay. Oh. So now what Harsha failed to say was he didn't say certain provision. Maybe it might be a better step. According to Harsha, it might be a better step that if the president gets the you know the opinion of the Supreme Court. Tarka, I, but, but, the, the in the immediate, in the but immediate, it's not breaking. It. Yeah, my point is, it's not breaking. Currently, the president. When, when, talking, when talking about the responses internationally as well, we spoke about uh, New Zealand and also uh, in the US. Uh, even there, where you know President Trump has been described by some to be uh, fairly undemocratic, I think one of the first things that was done was that they went to the legislature in that country, which is the representatives and the Senate, and uh, pretty soon adopted a $484 million uh, relief package. And all of those sort of financial provisions for small enterprises, much bigger country, much larger sums of money than what we're talking about. But those processes were followed, regardless of whether you think that Trump is a personally a Democrat or an authoritarian uh, or populist or whatever. Processes for uh, the processes that you expect to function within a democratic framework function. And those allocations were made. Right now in Sri Lanka, the concern is, I mean, with no parliament, there are no oversight committees. The Sectoral Oversight Committee, uh, National Finance, uh, Committee on Public Enterprises, Committee on Public Accounts, none of those, none of those oversight mechanisms are functioning. Yeah. I mean, last week on the show, we, yeah. uh, we had one of a lawyer uh, who was saying that, oh, we're uh, kind of, there's a committee that's, we have, the president has appointed a committee that is overseeing it. Yeah, so Tarek, you can yeah. respond to that, yes. No, I can't really respond to something what the lawyer said, which yeah. I... Like no, 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 but you know, I'm saying the fact yeah. that like, there are no yeah, committees but, in yeah, operation yeah, right but, now. But you have, to, you have to look at it within the context of the current situation. Now, what we are is in an interim period. It, you know, it, it, to put it out like, you know, one of the three pillars of government is going to go missing. So, That's nonsense. So, Iran, okay, the, good the, point. The, 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 yeah, this so. is an interim period because we are in the process of, you know, electing, uh, elect, electing uh, the National Assembly. So, Iran, uh, and the, 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 the parliament, you know, has exhausted, exhausted its mandate and doesn't... Uh, but you also indicated earlier that this process might go on forever. So don't we need to... Well, uh, at least for a prolonged period. Yes. Let me Doesn't put it that the, mean that we need to address you know, that concern? Let me now? put it this way. Like, let's say, you know, like, uh, um, I don't know, internationally they said that it's going to take, a, to find a vaccine, it's going to take about 18 months or something. Okay. So I think we have to learn to live with the virus. Not elections, yeah. forget elections, yeah. but we need to learn to live with the virus. May, may I intervene? And, because I didn't get much time. Because the thing is, you know, answer to your question is, now president has not, violated any of the articles of the constitution all right so what happens president issued a proclamation made a proclamation to uh, uh, have the general election uh, uh, within the framework of the constitution right then unfortunately because of the covid uh, uh, 19 epidemic the election commissioner after finalizing the uh, conclusion of the nominations he postponed the election Right? Then, uh, according to Article 24.3 of the Election Act, uh, on 20th of April, the Election Commission decided to fix the date for 20th of June. So, that 20th of June is after 2nd of June. Right? It is not the fault of the President. Right? Mr. So, wait a bit, wait, wait. Let me, let me explain that. <laughs> this is not the courthouse. <laughs> right? <laughs> let me finish my position. Then, then you can ask some questions. Then, of course, then our uh, two friends, they are, their position is pa president should con reconvene the parliament. For what? The two things they mentioned. That is the financial control uh, 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 according to the Article 148 uh, uh, with the parliament. But there is another, I, I uh, pointed out 153 that president can uh, use that article to run the public service. Then other purpose is to make new legislations. But as legislatures, of course, we know very well how long it takes to amend a bill or introduce new legislation. So I think within a within couple of weeks, you can't do that. If you go through the, uh, the procedure in the parliament, 
right? You can't do that. It's so it is baseless. Uh, Minister, right? uh, but returning I mean, we've Parliament seen is urgent baseless. Bills what we have to do is, in the past, what we have to do is, the by using the constitutional provisions and the provisions in the election law. So, once we control the COVID-19 and <coughs> getting back to the normals in the country, so then we can have the general Minister, election. We can have the new Parliament. Wait, wait. Yeah. The, the new Parliament can approve all these yeah, no, no problem. Uh, agreed. and I, financial I, I, commitments. No, there is no question about what you're saying right now because, as I said before, there are different interpretations made by uh, different uh, lawyers on, on the case of the constitutionality of the decisions taken by the president. Uh, the question is very simple. My question to you right now uh, is going to be very simple. Uh, so, uh, Minister, you know, I won't revisit the past. Um, uh, you are a breakaway uh, from, the, um, uh, yeah. from the previous 2015 yeah. Yeah. Uh, government that came into power and one of the reasons that was portrayed or highlighted by majority of the breakaway faction at that time from the Mahindra Vajapaksa camp to the Maitri Pala Sinisena camp was the fact that uh, the power was consolidated between the brothers uh, that was Vasil Vajapaksa, Gotabe Vajapaksa and even President Mahindra Vajapaksa along with Nama Vajapaksa so on and so forth. Those are the claims made at that time saying the power was consolidated uh, between the family. It's no different now, <laughs> is so, it? So as a, as uh, you a, have as a, uh, you as have a, a, as a result of that combination, as a result of that the, combination, the, uh, the, head of the task force uh, as all well. three Rajapaksha brothers that 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 government, right, uh, 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 managed to uh, restore the peace in the country. No, but there's enough right? and more after, reason for it. After to be, 28 for, years, for people like terrorists Iran are defeated to be worried by that government. Wait, wait, you wait and see. Now, yes, now my learn, my friend said uh, Iran that the economic situation. What is the economic situation? Uh, the last quarter of the uh, 2019, 2.7 GDP. The 2.7. Now, even even this year, government is committed to pay 3.2 billion dollars. Uh, the the uh, the uh, loans, uh, installments, and the interest, right? So this is the situation in the country, and uh, not only that. Of course, that previous government couldn't uh, table the appropriation bill for the year 2020. Instead, they table vote on account, right? But uh, so uh, that does is, it that worry is, all? Does it worry right? all, uh, Minister? Uh, does it worry all that right now again the status quo remains like uh, before 2015? The power is consolidated uh, between the uh, three brothers, the president, uh, the prime minister, and the minister of economic development, and the parliament is also not sitting, and they can do whatever they want. Uh, it's like a rogue parliament, and it, it seems like the country is uh, running on this mentality right now. Does this worry you all? Yeah, I, I, I'm... <laughs> amused to their worries as uh, their LTT were defeated. Definitely, COVID-19 also will be defeated. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> that is their the worry. Time. Yeah, I'm leaving COVID-19 for a moment. When the COVID-19 is defeated, you said, so you can I'm have really a lecture. I'm really amused so to hear uh, what he was saying about the Rajapaksa Troika, which is now in power, right? Uh, 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 and it's a Troika because you have a president, you have a prime minister. <laughs> And then you have a task force headed by another brother, right, who is not an elected official or anything like that, not a public servant, right, given that authority. And then to find those who have been critical of that philosophy earlier coming and saying that's okay in the, in the present situation. Um, I always look more than at individuals, I look at structures. And I think we should always be concerned about structures. It doesn't matter if it's the SLFP, UNP, uh, whatever, you know, it's the structures that are matter, and we need to look at the structures. There was a thing said that, you know, when the, you know, the Easter bomb attacks were referred to a moment ago. Certainly this country has had issues. 2017, we had droughts. 2018, we had a constitutional coup. 2019, we had that problem. 2020, we have the COVID problem. 2019, we had the, the Easter bombing. Uh, Easter, Easter bombing, bombings, right? And so we have had a problem, external problem. And then saying, okay, the, 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 on, on the Easter bombings issue, I'll only make this statement on the Easter bombing issues. Certainly, and I have said this publicly, the government of the day had to take responsibility, right? But the government of the day, the executive arm of government, not the legislators, because legislators don't exercise the power, doesn't have the information or whatever. But I'm saying to this government again, Stop pointing fingers. 
those who are responsible or who are responsible directly or indirectly, if they say that they had the information, they didn't act on the information, they acted irresponsibly, judicially, take it to court now. You have been criticizing it for the last two years. Take it to court now. Let's see justice being done. Maybe we do want that. to see justice being done, even on the Easter bombings. Because I'm saying this because I lost friends also with the Easter bombings. And I think that justice must be done. So this thing about, right, we, 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 we think about saying we are in opposition, we are saying one thing, we are saying in the government another thing. I'm saying in opposition, if we are guilty, right, please take us to court, adopt a judicial process, and then we, if we have done something wrong, we must be punished for it. The law must work equally for everybody. I'm saying that to this government. Please do it. Please do it. Uh, right? Harsha, uh, Harsha, do you think, you know, given the fact that the government has mismanaged as, uh, as uh, articulated by Iran, do you think the government could have done things differently? Because it's very difficult, you know, when you're in government. There can be a lot of people pointing the fingers at the government. It's very easy. And you all have been in the opposition for quite some time. And it's very easy to point fingers. I always say sometimes when you all were in government, you all would have thought that you all were in the opposition. And that is one of the reasons that you all were not even able to govern the country as expected. So that is my personal opinion. <laughs> but my question to you is, do you agree uh, or with uh, Iran when he says this situation has been mismanaged? If you all were in government, what would you all have done differently? Yeah, I mean, it's a hypothetical question <clears throat> uh, as to, you know, what could have happened. But I'll give you some examples. But before I do that, I want to uh, mention two things. One is about the emergency situation, right? P the emergency under public safety, I was just reading this, public right? Security, public security. And the emergency referred to in 70, I think, uh, subclause 7. Are they the same, you know, do they mean the same thing? Is the emergency under public security the same as emergency uh, uh, envisaged in 70, uh, 77, uh, 7, right? right? Yeah. So, so that is that is that is one. So, uh, but it also because I was right. Insane. So the second thing is, you are asking about a violation of the constitution. Now here, uh, the president knows very well that the parliament cannot be reconvened within the three months, right? So he knows that it is going to be violated, right? Whether it is violated or not at the moment is one. But he's well aware it will be violated. So he's I mean, not violating. It, no, no, no. It will be violated because but he's, the, not, he's not violating. No, no, no. On the second of the June. The no, no. It is a second of June. <laughs> if we if we don't sit, the constitution will yeah. be violated. So th th that's my point, okay. right? Now asking about management. Some dates were uh, mentioned here. I also would like to give you some dates. Uh, like uh, Iran said, uh, Sajid Premadasa first talked about this uh, uh, on the 25th of January. In fact, I was also a bit perplexed why was he talking about it at this time. And he, there was a big debate in our group. And he said, no, we have to talk about it. It is important. He spoke about it. Uh, on the first, uh, uh, for, for the first time on January 25th. Then on the 28th of January, Mr. Dinesh Kunawadana said, don't worry, we have fixed some machines at the airport. We will be able to keep COVID patients out. Then in February, again, uh, Mr. Premadasa spoke in parliament under a question 23-2, to which um, uh, he got some, he got actually ridiculed by uh, members of the government. On the 11th of March, the first COVID patient, local patient, was found. On the 17th of March, or 15th or 17th of March, uh, the president, uh, uh, speaking to SARC uh, leaders, said, we are going to have the election, we have no problem. Then uh, the day after that, he said, well, we have only 28 patients. Are you asking me to close the country with 28 COVID patients? Right? Because I'm saying that because you said immediately he changed his position. I'm saying he didn't. Because then on the 18th of March, uh, he addressed the nation again and said, give my brother two-thirds and I will, uh, you know, that is what we want. He said he will reduce uh, dal and salmon, mm -hmm. the price of dal and salmon, which has now that gasset has been uh, revoked and the price of dal and salmon has uh, have, uh, gone up again. Then on the 19th of March, 
he continued the process of uh, uh, accepting nominations. Right? Even though the country was uh, sort of work from home, the divisional secretary's offices were closed. Why? Why was that? If he was really concerned about flattening the curve, if he was really concerned about managing the pandemic, would he have done that? Right? And he it went... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me finish. Let me finish. On the 19th, the nominations uh, were completed. And on the 20th uh, uh, and the 19th, the elections commissioner said, there is no way we're going to have elections on the 25th of April. And on the 20th, uh, the president locked down the country. I am not going to believe uh, the story that you are trying to weave here, that the president acted immediately when he found out the problem was getting out of hand. I am saying, no, this was a plan to ensure that under whatever circumstances that we will go ahead and have the election. Of course, the, the curve didn't get flattened. Even after five weeks, curve only started going up, right? Uh, so the, the cost, the economic cost of the uh, lockdown um, has to be questioned. Sorry, you can respond to that. Uh, to right? uh... so, 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 therefore, so therefore, my point is uh, whether uh, the, the, the intentions were as pure as what he is making it out to be. Right. Um, so you can respond to that, Tarek. And yeah. then I come to the minister as well. Yeah, yes. I mean, I mean <laughs> I, as I said, you know, well before the first patient was detected in Sri Lanka, that was 27th of uh, January, okay, the, there was COVID task force. And then uh, what Harsh is forgetting to say is that on the 12th, the schools were closed. From 14th to 16th, they, we were on holiday. Yeah, we were on holiday, Harsh. So they, to, to stop the spread of COVID, President might, might have made that statement on the 17th, given the, you know, given the number of patients. That yeah, was but, uh, Harsh's question was, is it as genuine uh, as uh, portrayed by you? Because you had the president saying about an election on the 17th to the SARC leaders saying, well, it, by hook or by crook, that That's a subjective election. point of view. You know, Harsha might think it's not genuine. Yeah, 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 uh, genuine. I would think it, it is genuine. But I think, you know, the majority of the people in this country think president is doing a genuine job in order to reduce uh, to COVID-19. Uh, Minister, yes. You can. Yes. Once the president made the proclamation according to the constitution, the, the process of the election passed to the election commission. Right? So therefore, president is not responsible for postponing or not holding election. No, was there any twisting of arms of the elections commissioners? No, no, there are no twisting of arms of the no, I'm, I'm commission. I'm question to you, commission, why, uh, commission, there are three members. Yeah. Three members. The, 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 the president of the commission is Mahindesh uh, Priya. So they, as a commission, they meet. And they take this decision independently. Can, no. can I please ask my friend a question here, yes. if you don't yeah, mind? Yes, of course. Now, he is referring to the Elections Act, yeah. right? Now, which is higher? Which, 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 which reigns supreme? Yeah, which reigns supreme? Is it the Constitution? Because under the Constitution, you have a three-month limit. Under the Elections Wait. Act, there is no limit at all. You can postpone it uh, from the 20th of June to July to August to September to October. That is not the fault of the president. No, no, no. Is, I'm asking is, you is, the question. I'm asking no, you the question once, because you're a once, lawyer. No, which no, which no, one is supreme? Once, no, uh, the Constitution is the supreme law of the country. Right. It's okay. But according to the Constitution, even the 70 sub Article 5, right, if you refer to that, once the proclamation of dissolved in Parliament is done, then automatically the election process right. will Minister, go to I the have, I have very, 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 very uh, small yes. question on the constitution. I don't want to delve too much on the constitution. Uh, right. Can I have just yeah. one question? Uh, yeah, Mr. Okay, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. we've uh, spent the better half of this discussion uh, debating on whether parliament should be reconvened. Is the president going to violate the constitution? Is there going to be an imminent violation of the constitution? So I think everybody on the panel would agree on the fact that there is a question of law and a question of fact surrounding the Constitution. Do you agree with that, Mr. Prem Jan? So, according to Article no, you have to, 129 uh, uh, of the yes. Constitution, according to Article... No, no, you have to uh, pose a question yes. and wait for the response, uh, Shalin, and then... Do you, uh, do you agree with that, Mr. Prem Jan? There is a question right. of law and a question of fact surrounding the Constitution in the country right now? If on the position of whether... No, at, at the moment, I don't see. You don't see? I, I, I don't see. But... I can, uh, I, can, I can explain it, if you allow me. 
I think we're we're running short on time. I believe. Yeah. Shamit. Yeah. You can. So follow up so up. yes. Uh, my follow-up question on at that the is, moment, but, no. But I think I think oh. a majority of us, uh, or, or the majority of the general public, believe that since such a lot of airtime is being spent on debating whether or not Parliament should be reconvened, is there going to be a violation of the Constitution? That there is a question of law and fact. You personally don't believe in it. That's your opinion. You're entitled to that. But according to her article 129, what I, I can't say. understand is the <laughs> fact that when the general public of this country believe that there is a, a question of law and a question of fact, the president, of course, at this time, and the government, is of the stance that there is no question of law, no question of fact surrounding uh, an imminent violation of the Constitution. And why is that? You know, once, you know, this is the first time, not only in Sri Lanka, entire world, experiencing this type of epidemic for the recent past, except uh, uh, Spanish flu hmm. uh, in, 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 in the uh, 1918, yes. and 700,000 uh, uh, Spanish uh, lost their lives and uh, about 1 million people lost their lives. 70 but, million, uh, huh? 70 mi 17 million people lost their lives. 70 million, to, uh, right? Spanish flu. So, not 700, 70 million. So, now, the once the legislatures draft this constitution, they never think about this type of epidemic, right? What they do is, by following the fundamentals of the constitution, mm. right? So then they draft this legislation. This is a very unusual situation. Mm. So this happened after the proclamation was made, mm. right? So now we have to go with the process. Hmm. So that's what we are doing at the moment. So, so, so my question is, what, now supposing, hypothetical question to you, hmm. right? Now supposing after 2nd of September, what is the position? No, but I, I don't think... I, uh, I think uh, exactly, uh, the, but the question, the, the problem is, uh, <laughs> Mr. Prema Jayanta, now even, we know the functions even of the you parliament. You can't reconvene the parliament. No, 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 the parliament functions of all. the parliament, the functions yeah, no of the... no parliament at all. Legislature, exactly. After we know about of September. The, we, we've been speaking about the functions of the legislature, we've been speaking about the functions of the executive, but no one has been focusing on the functions of the judiciary. Just because the legislature drafts uh, an act, that does not become law. We are not sure of what law it is. It's up to the Parli uh, I mean, to the Supreme Court to interpret this law. Interpretation of the Constitution is, a, is as important as drafting the Constitution. So just because uh, a group of lawyers or a group of uh, parliamentarians come and say, this is the right interpretation of the Constitution, it does not become an authority. Same goes for the opposition. They say this is the right interpretation, that does not become authority. The proper forum the proper institution that is constitutionally uh, established in this country to interpret the constitution is the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka. My question to you is why, since we are discussing so much on TVs, on, on media conferences, since we are discussing this so much, why doesn't the president simply use his power under Article 129 no. and seek an opinion from the Supreme Court? It is not a decision. Yeah. It's not binding. It's not an yeah, authority. But, uh, so, Sharon, I think, I think the panelists responded to that question because earlier, so I'm just going to uh, take, the, take it away. But I, my, my, I have a question for you. Uh, answer in, in 25 to 30 seconds, the minister, because I know I have to <laughs> give equal air time to Iran and Harsha as well, who are sitting here on the show tonight, including Tarika. Finalize it. You know, not the final round. Just to, just <laughs> to uh, <laughs> get the... Uh, minister, what I don't understand is, yes. I know there is a constitution in the country and there is the fact that everyone has to abide by it and there is no question about it. As law-abiding citizens, we have to uh, abide by the constitution of the country. Where does the welfare of the people stand in this whole equation? What reigns supreme? Now, you are a lawyer. You are a father as well at the end of the day. Uh, you have kids. You have children. You are accountable for your kids as well as the people who voted you in as well, Minister. What reigns supreme? Is it the welfare of the people or the constitution? No. Number one, welfare of the constitution. So the welfare of the people or the constitution? So it's two people. People. People, okay. number one. And if you go to the, we have to follow the constitutional provisions mm. and the provisions in the uh, relevant acts to uh, 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 do that welfare. Right. So, Iran, um, uh, interestingly, uh, the minister agrees that the welfare of the people is the topmost priority uh, component in this whole equation. So, does that answer your question uh, of uh, the government's uh, understanding and uh, uh, thinking behind uh, battling COVID-19? Do you take that as an answer? No, I don't think it was the welfare of the people. And one reason is, as Dr. Harsha said, is that we went through 
a process of nominations, I myself met thousands of people. And with the lockdown, I had to go basically away for self-quarantine because I had to meet them. Because when you say there's an election and you have to be looking at all these people because I'm responsible for helping the party to nationally organize, right? And I had to do that myself. It's a very, very responsible way of actually handling it. Then the testing was not done adequately, right? Even, even today, the testing is not adequate. All the specialists, you can ask the consultants, lots of reports are coming out, right? You take a country like even Korea, which has doubled our population or a little bit more. They're doing about 4,000 tests a day. We were at 150, up to 300, maybe closer to 500 now. 1,000. 1,000 now. Korea is close, 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 closer to 1,000 now. And therefore, if you take it with the Korean one, we should probably be closer to 2,000. 2,000, yes. Right, closer to 2,000, if you do that calculation. So we are, we are still under testing. We are, we are thankful mm -hmm. to the health workers. We are thankful to those on the front line. We are thankful to the armed forces, mm -hmm. particularly the reports I've heard from the quarantine centers where the armed forces were involved. They even went to the extent of taking care of patients. Even, even when birthdays came up, they recognized that people were having their birthdays. I feel sorry for them because they were doing something which they shouldn't have been doing. They were not trained to do some of them. If you look at the naval officers and so forth and what has actually happened to them. That is why I was saying, right, that this, this issue was not actually managed properly, not managed properly, and it needs to be managed properly. Coming to the constitutional issue, because I didn't speak about the constitution. There are countries which have written constitutions, there are countries which don't have written constitutions. Every situation in life is not written in a constitution or in the law, but there are precedent, international practices, principles, and jurisprudence. Based on that, some decisions are made. That is why you have a judiciary that you go to, you can get an opinion if you're the president, if it's ordinary citizens like us, we, won't, we have to go and file a case and get some determination through a case. So why, I just don't understand, given that this is there and this is a constitutional democracy, why this is not being used? The opposition, I must say this in closing because they dismiss. No, I, I, I will give you an opportunity for your closing remarks as well. Uh, uh, Nadeem, you can uh, ask a question very, very, to or Dr. Harsha. Uh, yeah, very quick question to, to Tharaka, actually. This is, uh, we were talking about, um, I mean, mismanagement and communications. We raised the example of the most recent announcements that were made regarding the curfew. And uh, I just sort of checked up on it just to clarify because I wasn't sure myself, but communications is of prime importance in disaster situations or in pandemic situations. And we've seen around the world how heads of state have been responsive uh, to the public, if, even in the United States, even, even if it is to say inject yourself with bleach, uh, there is a regular communication between uh, the White House and, and the public. The president has not addressed the nation since the 19th of March. Are you asking me? Yeah, that oh, is the yeah. question. Why not? Uh, um, no, I think, you know, this is a different president. You know, I, I, I don't think, you know, he's the president who's interested in votes. He's a president who said, you know, he doesn't mind even if it's one term. He just wanted time to do what he, what, what he was set out to do. And I think he's going to do, do that. You know, and I think, you know, the, even going back to what uh, uh, Iran was saying, you know, What's uh, Korea's GDP and what's our GDP? And Korea has about twice the population of us. And Korea is managed a situation with 4,000 tests. So don't you think? And they are twice the population. Mind you, and we are, we are at 1,600. So maybe, maybe in a couple of weeks or something, you know, we will move, move, to, move to about 2,000, 3,000 tests. Yeah? Korea also had elections. Yeah, Korea had, and they had the highest voting percentage they are during the With corona. Super, I mean, the voting process and the system is is much different to in Sri Lanka, where you know you go, it's the pen you all use the same pen. So uh, you can your, take your own pen and go to, uh, go to the elections. <laughs> and you have you, you, you sound like and, and no, just no, on the, on the, on no, the I mean, testing. I think no, no, Korea. I mean, Korea I mean, may, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. You five million people had eight thousand. No, 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 no. I mean, you have to. Okay, we had the we had, we had the uh, local council elections. Okay, yeah. during the local council elections, the 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 uh, voting was counted at the centres. Okay, yeah. I mean same 
the same thing can be done uh, during a, a presidential election and also under uh, you know under the provisions of the uh, the uh, uh, the constitution maybe we can ha have it in a, on a staggered base basis so yeah these are why, things why, to be to why, be why, to why, be, why, to why be are we looking at always the negative side but Tarika, well, Tarika, interestingly you sound like one of your uh, colleagues in government who said that if people can queue up at Satosa, why can't they queue up at polling booths, which was uh, ridiculed in, in, in uh, media, uh, in social media. So you say that if they don't have pens, bring a pen from home. Uh, right <laughs> no, now, people I, don't really have, have money. If you, if you uh, calculate 5,000 rupees divided by uh, 30 days, you get 135. A pen in Sri Lanka today costs at least around 30 bucks. Did you know that? So you think that people can go to the polling booth, look, go look, to a shop and buy a, a, buy a pen? Another 5,000 I mean, will be given. This is, this another 5,000 will be given. I'm, I'm, you, glad, you know, I'm glad to know that another 5,000 rupees will be given. You, you know, this is, that's, uh, you know, this is no. a, these are difficult times. Okay? The, the, you, the, the, uh, the, as I said, you know, even the Western countries uh, will see a huge reduction in their GDPs and their growth rates. You know, we, are not, we are not pretending that you know, everything is going to be rosy. Okay, and the issue is, do we really want to have elections, or do we want to keep saying Corona, 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 and then wait till uh, opportune moment for the opposition? So, uh, but, Harsha, uh, Harsha, but just yeah, on that, yeah. on on my specific Nothing, question, which was on communication, I need to I need yeah. to focus yeah. your attention on Dr. Okay, Arsh. so yeah. I will I will actually pose this question to to Dr. Harsha De Silva as well. I'm sure uh, Dr. Harsha De Silva understands the importance of of communications in uh, these kinds of situations. We have not. Uh, well, not that we've not heard from the president per se, but uh, there hasn't been that sort of re voice of reassurance of uh, I am in charge, I am in control, this is what uh, I am doing, this is what... Uh, there's been no uh, clearly spelled out uh, program uh, that has been articulated as such since the 19th of March. Is this concerning to you, Dr. Archdiscipline? <clears throat> just so that, you know, just there was an alert that 19 new COVID patients were found today. 19. So, I mean, I don't know whether the management is working or not because it doesn't look like that. Can you I have know, a quick response? 11 yeah, since the program yeah, started. 11 uh, since the program started. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a lot, right? And so, therefore... Now, I also want to make a correction because I just checked on Worldometer, which is what everybody uses. Uh, tests per million in Sri Lanka is um, 1,254. Yeah, yeah, I also checked that. Uh, and uh, South Korea is 12,300. So, obviously, South Korea is doing 10 times more testing. See, the issue is this. Uh, this is mostly asymptomatic. So therefore, you don't know whether you have it or not. So therefore, unless you check, you don't know. So what people like uh, Dr. Ravi Rananelia has been saying for a long period of time, I've been following his blog since uh, March, is that the minimum number of tests that we need to do is 2,050, I think he said. And he said the ideal number is 6,000 a day. Uh, for whatever reason, and uh, GMOA also, and specialist doctors have been saying, you have to increase the number. But it hasn't been increased. So the well, fact... It has been increased no, from it 300 has, to no, no, 1,600. It, it has been increased to 1,500. From 300. Right? right? So, but it has taken a long time. So that is what Iran is talking about, whether we are managing it well. Now, who is advising? I mean, whose advice is the president taking? Because on one day we hear GMOA blasting somebody else saying, look, you're not taking our advice, you're taking somebody else's advice and so on and so forth. I know. We run an ambulance service, right? And we know that we have about 1,500 patients that we take to hospital every day now, every single day, right? And when we take a COVID patient, and we take about 60 COVID patients every day, we now have full uh, personal protection equipment. And it takes about, uh, you know, um, seven hours for one transfer because we have to take the patient, deal with the issues in hospital, uh, disinfect the, the unit, and we have to keep the unit without using for another three to four hours, right? Now, the problem that we have 
is people don't tell us whether they are having uh, the right symptoms or whether they think they are COVID or not. So we don't know. So therefore, we have to be, we have to take protection. So this is where the management uh, of the poor Navy guys uh, also was wrong. You know, you can't send uh, the, the Navy uh, person with a gun. You have to send that person in PPE. And I'm saying this because I know this, right? So therefore, because uh, it is uh, asymptomatic and because we are not doing any sort of random tests, we really don't know what the, what the, what the real numbers are. I, I hope that the numbers are less than, uh, you know, otherwise. But the issue then about the communication is that Right? We need to be told, my daughter is sitting for her O-levels, right? And we don't know when the uh, schools are going to start. She goes to a local school, and only like the other day, uh, on last week, Friday, they said, look, you know, you can, uh, we have an, uh, two hours of school, school uh, on, online, right? And that is still a kid who goes to a, a, a school yeah. here I, in Colombo, but like around... Asha, I'll give you, I, I'll give you for your closing remarks, you can mention about all this and more, but I just want to give 20 seconds uh, for yeah. Tarek to respond if he wants to, yeah. and then uh, wrap the session uh, for tonight. So Tarek, you can respond to that, I'll give you around 30 seconds. Uh, uh, very quickly now, all this mismanagement with, which Harsha and Iran has been talking about, all these uh, the COVID-19 patients, Everybody is, you know, from a quarantine area. When you say 19 patients are, you know, 19 patients are found, it's not from here and there and everywhere. It's from, it's, a, it's not from the society, it's from an isolated area. That itself goes to show that, you know, our contact tracing is very well done. One of the, one of the best things which we are doing at the moment is contact tracing. More than any other country, I would say, except perhaps with the exception of Israel, the, we are doing our con contact tracing very well. That's why when you say, when you say 11 COVID patients or 19 COVID patients or whatever, they are, they are, they are from, you know, quarantine areas. So they thank you from, very much. Thank they you are very from much, random. For your, for your thoughts um, in the first and second round. Uh, we need to go for a short commercial break, but I thought before going for a short commercial break, uh, to state a few things. Um, when uh, Dr. Harsha mentioned about, uh, uh, about uh, the social stigma surrounding COVID-19, I want uh, those watching us from home to remember that there is no, uh, nothing called social stigma surrounding COVID-19. If you are uh, having the symptoms, go out there and tell the people and make the life of the security forces much more convenient to ensure that uh, you are diagnosed right and uh, to protect those who are living with you and those who are in surrounding areas to make sure that we are on the right track in terms of a nation. And I was watching a certain channel, I don't want to mention names because I too represent the channel. When I was watching the show uh, on uh, the primetime news bulletin, I believe, uh, I was somewhat disheartened being a minority uh, in this country uh, to know that the way in which they uh, report uh, socially uh, uh, makes uh, inevitable to even come out and say that you are from a certain section of a minority having uh, infected with COVID-19 and I think uh, being a responsible media channel, being working for News First and MTV for the last 18 years, I'm proud to be representing a channel that does not divide people on those premises. So anyway, going for a short commercial break, when we come back, it's the final round, stay connected, stay with Face Nation, we will be right back. Uh, our topic of discussion today is uh, battling COVID-19 and Sri Lanka's political landscape. Welcome back. Uh, it's the final round. We start off uh, with Iran Vikramrat, the candidate of the Samagajana Balavegia, battling COVID-19 and Sri Lanka's political landscape. Now that is our topic of discussion today. I'll give you two minutes uh, for your closing remarks. Um, thank you. I'm so glad that uh, several years ago, when the opposition, we were in government and the opposition criticized when Harsha was championing the cause of 1990 suicide area, saying that this was some kind of Indian conspiracy to hear that today, Suez area is taking at least 60 patients a day. I think mean, this is the way that we need to work. We, we are not being critical, but we are being constructive in what we are saying. Self-employed people are having a hard time. 
daily wage earners are having a hard time. Agricultural producers are having wastage on their hands. Private sector employees have been suddenly asked to pay their pay taxes. Inconsistencies without following through stable policies, including tax policies, inconsistencies have led to this. And these inconsistencies we will see over time. The person parliament, right, is still has a five-year mandate. I like to refer to this letter that was written and signed by the leader of the opposition, Sajit Premadasa, Rani Vikramasinghe, Mr. Sampantan, and some others. This is the spirit in which it was written. We are prepared to lend our support to government in parliament to achieve the above, so the governance of the country can proceed properly and lawfully in compliance with the constitution. We assure the people of our country that we will not draw salaries, nor attempt to defeat the government, not even defeat the government, nor thwart any of the legitimate actions of the government during the period. Our good faith has already been demonstrated by the fact that we have cooperated fully with the government in maintaining the curfew, although the same has not been legally imposed. So we are coming to the government and saying, we disagree with the mismanagement that has gone, but we are willing to help you. This story about parliament, the technical story, look at the spirit of what needs to be done. If parliament needs to be recalled, this parliament has a five-year mandate. The president used his powers to dismiss it in four and a half years. If the government wants the support of the opposition, it has already been expressed and expressed in writing. And we will support the government because it's people first, politics second. Thank you very much, uh, Iran Vikramaratna, nationalist candidate of the Samak Janabala Vegya. We now move our attention to Tharaka Bal Surya, candidate of the Sri Lanka Pujana Perimuna. I think, the, I think the opposition's uh, the stand during the COVID-19 has been a, a double-tongued double -tongued policy. Either Iran keeps talking about the, how the poor people are suffering, but none of them are talking about opening up the economy. Now, uh, we have had over 700 odd patients, and now it's probably like another 19 today. But we also see that in countries like, uh, countries like today in Thailand, they had opened up, and there's far more deaths, far more uh, patients. Countries which have really suffered from COVID-19, like Spain, Italy, Germany, they are all opening up. In the United States, certainly in states like Georgia, they are all op opening up. So now Iran is not talking about uh, talking about you know opening up the economy and trying to get the uh, trying to get the uh, the uh, livelihood of the people uh, uh, restarted. Mm -hmm. So it's a double double tongued stand, you know, uh, saying that you know uh, that they will provide support. We have seen how the opposition has acted. We have also seen that uh, Manusha Nanakar and Sumandiran saying that you know the president can even be impeached. You know, we should only have elections when we have zero patients. That's not practical. So that in itself goes to show that, you know, Sajid Premadasa doesn't want to face elections at this junction. He is waiting for an opportune moment so that, you know, we know that there will be economic hardships uh, due to uh, the COVID-19. He's waiting for an opportune mo moment, hoping that, that, that the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the economic hardships which will uh, come about uh, will... Uh, will make the people vote in their favour. So this is much. just plain politics. Thanks a lot, Tariq Abal, so the candidate of the Sri Lanka Pujan Panamuna. Uh, I uh, usually give two minutes each in the final round for each speaker, but uh, Harsha, I'll give you 30 seconds because there was a new argument that was brought forward by Tariq to respond to that and go to your closing remarks uh, about, um, about uh, Sajid Premadasa uh, not having, uh, about the uh, president being impeached, uh, those being discussed at political fora at present. You can respond to that in 30 seconds, and then I will give you for th or two minutes for your closing. Meeting. Right. I think you need to read the Constitution, Taraka, because in the old Constitution, if I'm correct, if uh, impeachment motion is brought, the president cannot dissol or dissolve parliament if the speaker is also uh, approved. But in the new Constitution, the 19th Amendment, I think that clause has been taken out. Right. So two it is very clear uh, that that doesn't uh, hold right. water. Two, so that's two a minutes. ridiculous argument. Two minutes for your uh, closing right. remarks. So my closing remark is, look, we have to all look at this as Sri Lanka. We represent different political parties. Uh, but at the end of the day, why are we doing this? Why am I here? Why are we all here? Because we think it is our duty to try and do the best we can for the people of this country. That's what we are trying to do. So we don't have to play politics all the time. Right? 
even Mr. Vikramasinghe in his uh, <laughs> interview had so said today, adversarial politics is not always necessary, right? We can work together, Tharaka. You and I can sit and discuss. We have a lot of things in common, right? Not always we fight. In this case, we have very clearly written and given our assurances that we will work with you. And to do that, we have to see eye to eye. You shouldn't always suspect us. You know, we are not trying to, you know, this is your double tongue story. I don't agree with that. The issue is people are suffering. Whether it is the, the corporate executive at Sri Lankan Airlines or the, the lady who comes to uh, help the, uh, the person in the house, the maid, the daily, uh, daily uh, person, right? Dailies won't come, right? And, and they have no money, right? Some uh, ladies may pay the salary even if they don't show up. Some may not, right? They are in real trouble. And if you look at the population distribution of this country, and I did that recently, looked at the Department of Census and Statistics, believe me, that if you break it down into deciles, meaning 10% blocks the population, the first five deciles from the lowest income, that is half the population before COVID, didn't make enough money to make ends meet every month. And what this has done, done is, there is a saying in Singhala, Gahing Vaticha Minihata Gona and Navagi. That is what has happened. So, Part of the money must come from somewhere. You printed 220 billion uh, rupees over nice the last uh, yeah. few weeks. Yeah. I'm not saying, uh, no, no, so nothing wrong with that. You, you use that money yes. to make sure uh, that people are looked Thanks after. Thank and you. the rest yeah. of the people, corporate executives, get the financial system to give out long-term concessionary finance much. for income support of Thank the you people of Thank this you country. Much, and you can do that. Together in Thank you very much, uh, for Harsha. Uh, Minister, again, I'm going to give you 30 seconds because a new argument was brought forward uh, by uh, Dr. Harsha about 220 billion rupees have been printed. You can respond to that in 30 seconds and then you can take your two minutes uh, uh, in conclusion. Yeah, normally not. I, I hope and pray that you don't bring in new arguments. No, no. Not, not, only this, not only this con, <laughs> of course, the, even the previous government, even without any yeah. pandemic like COVID 19, yeah. printed money than this government. So then in the future parliament, so the, all these will be presented in parliament uh, to the financial committees and all that. We know very well that at the moment there are no committees functioning at the moment. You can take a two minutes, final yes. two minutes. Yes. Now, I think uh, even Prime Minister Modi addressed twice for the last uh, uh, six weeks. So the president uh, addressed the nation. And apart from that, daily media uh, statements issued uh, by the media secretary, uh, of the president. So there is no question about that. And the task force is meeting day, uh, most probably uh, daily basis and defense council also be meeting. And there is no division and there are no two factions uh, in our, our camp, of course, as you said. We know very well that uh, UNP camp, you, you, you agree or not, we know obviously that there are two camps. And we manage it very well. As a result, we manage at, even at this stage that uh, about, about 720, even after seven weeks, right, in active, uh, 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 active of uh, COVID-19 in Sri Lanka, compared to other countries, we were placed on ninth, uh, number one, New Zealand. So compared to uh, the developed countries, of course, we have managed very well by using intelligence other than the only country, uh, use uh, intelligence Israel. So then we are very proud about our forces, government servants, and the field officers like Grama Seva, Niladari, Samurdi, and development officers, and GES, and uh, division secretaries, and health sector, right, uh, taking all these pains. And 7.4 million families who benefited as a result of uh, the government policy decisions taken uh, after this COVID-19. So therefore, our, my position is we have managed it very well, and President and the government is managing very well the COVID-19 at this juncture. And uh, even without uh, today, uh, even at today discussions at the temple trees, none of the uh, uh, ex-parliamentarians uh, spoke about elections. We all focus our attention to control the COVID-19. But unfortunately, my learned friends camp, no, right. not Thank a single representative, 
uh, that meeting. Thank you, you very much. Uh, to know what we are doing. Uh, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Sujit Premachan, the uh, candidate of the Sri Lanka Pujana Parliament. Just to remind you, I don't want a response from you, but in India, uh, you had uh, only Prime Minister Narendra Modi making a statement. In Sri Lanka, you had the President and the Prime Minister making two special statements. Yes. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, uh, Iran Vikram Ratna, uh, naturalist candidate of the Samagi Janabala Vege for joining us this evening. Dr. Harshwari Silva, candidate of the Samagi Janabala Vege as well. Uh, also, Minister Sushil Premajanta, candidate of the Sri Lanka Pujana Paramuna, and also Tarak Balasuriya, candidate of the Sri Lanka Pujana Paramuna. I wish all four of you uh, uh, tremendous luck and fortune to be elected uh, to our parliament, next parliament. If, if at all there is an election on the 20th of June, or else at least we'll see all of you again if the parliament reconvenes. <laughs> uh, so, all the best to the four of you, and thank you very much, uh, the gentlemen, for joining us this evening on the show because during a pandemic of this sort, it's very important to keep the public abreast of information and a salute to the all four of you for joining us this evening on the show. Thank you very much, Nadim, and thank you very much, Charlene, and our young law student for joining us uh, this evening uh, on the show. I, I leave you tonight, uh, as we step into the holy uh, week of Vesak, I leave you tonight with a quote from Lord Buddha. The past is already gone, the future is not yet here. There is only one moment.